seven. And that seventh dance, as in the seven days that it took for creation, how many days will it take to destroy? It'll take seven. And those seven dances are the seven arms. All right. And those seven arms are brought through a portal. All right. And that portal. OK. Is place. And that morning process through that morning, people think morning means a bad thing. We say good morning. OK. Well, there is a good to morning because if you're morning, well, then there will be a process of your healing if you allow yourself time to grieve. It doesn't mean that the morning itself is supposed to be good. No. But that good morning. All right. Will allow for you to grieve. And recover if you run and act like there has been no destruction. OK, and you just try to build something else. There will be no foundation. All right. And you need a foundation. But what is the foundation phase? What well, is the right angle? You have to have the right angle. OK, cool. What is the right angle? 90 degrees. All right. What is the 90 degrees? It's the seven. And you can only see that if you draw the seven the right way. The right way. You understand? As in, what is the right way? This would be the seven. Let's see if I can get some better representation here this nigga must think he'll teach us some shit we outside teasing you remember the you take you outside boom so there's your seven the seven is the right angle all right the seven becomes the law which is the l all right you say oh it's i self law and master a lot of people say i self law and master i self law and master okay this is different characteristics that you will point out attributes that you will point out about what you call the self okay but this right here is a seven but it's the right angle and it's 90 degrees so from that seven we can destroy or from that seven we can build and if you don't understand that well then that's why we explain further about what this is in this is 11 seven all right through We'll be speaking about a language that people would have to understand. And if you say 711, well, what is a 711? That seven becomes that which you need, all right? Which means before you even become a tribal or a mason or any of this stuff, a Rosicrucian, you have to know your foundation. You have to understand what the foundation is. And I explained to you that that foundation is what's called Boaz and Jachin. And Jachin. is the one who establishes and Boaz is the one who has strength. So if we establish strength, then we set up what? 11. So if I know how to build, then I know how to destroy. All right. Like the diagram. If I have the diagram, then I don't need to knock this tower over and fuck this tower up and it fall over. All this other. No, if I want to knock this tower down, because I already understand the foundation that I built this tower on. All I have to do from using that same knowledge of building it up, I can take it straight down the same way you saw the Twin Tower fall. So, okay, well, the Twin Towers, what are we speaking about? We're speaking about destruction. Because 9-11, Revelation chapter 9, verse 11, speaks about Apollyon and Abaddon, which were the words, literally the words for the destroyers or the destruction, which becomes the Twin Towers, where you see it as twin attributes, all right, but it's really one word, when you put it together, it says destroyer. Okay. So then 9-11 was a message of a time period of destruction that is coming. And they know that it's coming and they fear that destruction because there's a cycle set up and it's called the 11 year cycle <laughs> of the sun. You can call it a coincidence if you want to, but the 11 year cycle is every time that 11 year cycle come around, they hold their breath because they don't know. If this will be that 11th year cycle, that gateway, because that's what an 11 is. You can walk straight through. It's the pylon or the pylon, as we call it. OK, but the pylon or the pylon, we say pylon in ancient Egypt is just different structures, two different structures. Right. That you walk through as a gateway. So if as a mason, I walk through here as an enter the princess was the first level you go through and I go through and I meet Boaz and I meet Jachin. All right. Like if I ask a brother, yo, you ever met Boaz and his family? He should be able to explain to me he has. What the fuck they be talking about? <laughs> As we speak, it's 111. But they don't be knowing what the hell they talking about. I can explain to you what I mean by Boaz and his family. Well, I mean Boaz as in Boaz, Jachin. But who is his family? Well, who was Boaz's wife? The one who nobody speaks about. You didn't give me Ruth as a traveler. I had to find Ruth. You gave me Boaz and Jachin. But you didn't give me Ruth. She was hidden. The same way Amunet was hidden. A word meaning hidden one. Okay. You hid the woman, Asherah, one of the trees was hidden. <laughs> you didn't tell me about her, the tree of life. You said they were being cut down or the trees were being cut down or Asherah as a tree was being cut down or the cherry tree was being cut down. But what about Ruth? 
or Ruth? What about her? Well, what does Ruth mean? Ruth means friend. All right. And in Masonry, we speak about friends. Often because a friend is somebody who went through as an, an initiate. If you didn't become an initiate, how could you be a friend? You don't know what we've gone through. You understand? That's how they speak. You're only an eavesdropper, which means that you're listening in on. Conversation that had nothing to do with you or it was private. It was supposed to be kept private or a mystery, but that's where you go into mystery, mystery, miss. All this comes from really the M, which is the M is the 13th letter. Okay. Which becomes the woman. All right. So stay with me. If I'm walking through these towers, which is Boaz, his word meaning strength. I broke that down to you. Jachin, you can find this in the Bible, by the way. It ain't something that I'm just saying to you. You actually find it. I think it was first Kings, uh, seven, what is that? First Kings seven, 11. If I'm not mistaken, somebody find it. One of them. All right. But it's, it's right there in first Kings chapter seven. You will find about Boaz and Jachin. OK. And actually, when you find it, it will add up to 11. So it had to be seven, uh, 12. So more to be square. It had to be seven, 12. So somebody fact check me on that. If you can, for a hot second, see if you can find first Kings uh, chapter seven, verse 12. Make sure that I got that still. You know what I'm saying? So I ain't rusty on that. All right. So, boom, you have this already lined out for you or lined up for you that you're walking through these gates. OK, after you walk through those gates, somebody is giving you light, but they have to give you light through darkness. Are you with me? So through that destruction of you being murdered or slaughtered or killed because you have to be born again. But in order for you to be born again, you have to be murdered or killed. You have to die. You understand? We mean, you go into the darkness. That's the blindfold and you are stripped. Naked. Everything that you thought was your reality, you let go of it. You actually experience a sense of nirvana at that point if you're able to let go, which a lot of people can't do that. They don't get the gist of it. But you're supposed to be able to let go in that moment. And you have to in some way, shape, form or fashion because you're dependent upon something called faith because you're not able to see, which is what we mean by walking by what? Faith and not by sight. And you're being pulled along. All right. If you listen to me, there's a, a, a gem here that I'm giving you by a rope. Like we say in the Quran or Al Quran, hold fast to the rope of Allah and see to it that you are not divided. Don't be divided. But they tell you to do it all together. So really, when you come in, a lot of times, most of the time, like I experienced myself, I wasn't by myself traveling. Even though I'm traveling by myself, I had a brother there with me and he happened to have my same exact birth name. His name was also Omari. So you had two what high priests that came. If I'm, if I'm lying, I'm flying. One day I'll bring him on here. Two high priests that came through at the same time. We both became cautious and we learned more about the darkness and the light. And we stepped onto them floors and we received our tools and we started to figure out, literally figure out or do the math. OK, with our own understanding, what this beast society was. Why you say let he who have overstanding count the number of the beasts. Only the ones who have overstanding can even understand what half is of this shit is going on is because it's all being played out off these same principles with the same foundation or they would not be able to build it so everything that i'm teaching you regardless of how masons feel about it or if we're not supposed to say all that that's one thing but you have to look at it everything i'm teaching you comes from that same g that they didn't even know they was holding because if i asked them to tell me tell me what is the biblical word for the oath what is the biblical word for it i really want to see and i'm i'm actually challenging brothers now masons what is the biblical word for the oath? Not the Hebrew word. I gave you that. The oath, O-W-T-H, would have given you the word sign. Okay? All right? That would have been the Hebrew word for oath as an O-W-T-H. So phonetically, it would have sound, sounded the same. But what is this biblical? It's a word in the Bible. All right? And I actually said it earlier. And I broke it down earlier. It's a word for oath. What is it? It brings you to the number seven. So somebody commented, I, I, I literally gave a whole breakdown of the word and why it's a sacred word. Right? The word is Sheba. Literally. Look it up. Sheba means oath. Somebody Google it. Sheba means oath. <laughs> you understand? Okay, so you took an oath and held it in your hand. I was there. I know we did. You held it in your hands. And you held it the same way that the Buddhas taught me to hold it when I was learning about chi. Right? You held it just like this. 
just like this. This was your hand and this was your hand. And you held in the center, G, G. But did you know what you were holding? Well, some of you might have thought, well, I'm holding the Bible. Right, because you were holding the basic instructions before leaving earth. <laughs> the basic instructions would have to be the blueprint or the foundation because if I have basic instructions as an architect, now I can build a building. Don't get lost. Stay with me. <laughs> now I can build a building. Okay? So then, what else were you holding? Somebody said, well, I was holding al Quran." Okay, well, if you were holding al Quran, you were holding a recitation of that which was be the Torah. And the Torah is still the pillars. Because if I'm saying Torah, I'm talking about a tree that was really a double stump tree. You would have to be because you say the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So this was the Torah. The word Torah, meaning Tob, Tobi, or Tob, meaning good, and Ra, meaning evil. So you were holding the Torah. If you're holding the Quran, you're holding a recitation of that, which was the law. And more revelation being brought to it, which were revelation. The light, okay, or cor and coron, corona, the light. Okay, so then you see the sun on the, the top of the Quran. You see Shams on the cover of our Quran. You see it. All right? All right, boom. Boom. So then everything has to tie into each other, doesn't it? It seems like it does. It seems like all of these things are connected. It seems like all of this is being left in some type of message of mathematics. And then it just so happens to be that if I'm going from, and you'll find this in the depictions, we put it there, that when you go from Boaz to Jachin, you actually find that you have a, a moon and found, if you go look up the uh, Masonic pillars, you will find a moon and a sun. All right. The same thing we taught in the Hermetic principles. How many Hermetic principles were there? Somebody comment the number. How many hermetic principles were there? Hmm? There were seven. <laughs> there were seven hermetic principles. Okay. And any hermeticist, which I am, I came through the school of hermetica as well, <laughs> knows that is the number seven is only speaking in terms of one, which is a foundation. So you think it to be, okay, you have the, what? The law of rhythm or the principle of rhythm all right you have cause and effect you have correspondence you have uh uh what is the other you got correspondence you got uh polarity right you got all of these different principles that are lined up vibration and mentalism so you have all of this lined up to be one because all of them are saying the same thing gender if i say male female you understand? Vibration. Well, vi how is vibration too? Because in order for something to vibrate, it has to at least move from one space to another. Vibration. In order for there to be some type of rhythm, it has to nod. You don't just nod upward and say, what's up? You say up and down. Nod. <laughs> you understand? You know, even mentalism, you have left and right of your brain. Okay? So everything was dealing with the same thing. It's all one. It's all connected. So the hermetic principles also illustrated there were to be nine. You feel me? So the point that I'm explaining here is when we're speaking in terms of ascension, you have to have some type of understanding of science. If you want to be some type of spiritual guru or Buddha yourself or Christ, of science, you can't think that Jesus was walking around here and didn't know science. <laughs> if you believe in this, just to say that you were right, believing in that, you couldn't think that you had an ascended master who didn't know how to count. You can't tell me you had an ascended man. You go, that's why I tell you, go look at people like Brahma Gupta. These people were the ones who introduced the sciences to what you call gravity. <laughs> you know what I mean? You think New Isaac Newton, who the fuck is that? You go back there, you go back 2,000 years ago, be like, what the fuck is an Isaac and an apple on the tree? You understand? All of that is allegory. No, that knowledge that you're speaking about from that fruit was passed on. You feel what I'm saying? Well, as you get into the Sanatani. But the passed on of information were the ones who, these were scientists that say, yo, we're going to record this for you. We might put it in allegory over here. We might put it in some folklore. Okay? But we're going to record it for you. And you will be the scientist who can. So why do you think to this day the physicists study the Quran? 
the Quran is studied by the physicists to this day. And to help them develop further all of their theories and what the uh, quantum physics and wormholes are, they refer to the Quran. When Hitler was building his weapons or his secret science weapons, which they didn't really tell you about all of them. That's the point of it. It was called secret science for a reason. <laughs> when they were building his weapons, all right, or these advanced arms, they called them miracle weapons. But why do they call them miracle weapons? Because mere occult were scientists that were hidden from the pyramids. Well, why do you say that? Because that's what the word miracle is. And I broke that word down for you. If anybody ever want to play. No, it's right there. It's in the genes to activate, by the way. A lot of this is going to keep coming. Mere occult. If I say mere, it's a word that means pyramid. And the word occult means occult. All right? Or it's occult. So mere occult, phonetically, is to say mere occult. Or the hidden sciences of the pyramid. Meaning, whoever the masters were in ancient Kemet, as you call it. All right? You understand? They charged their pyramids with cyorg energy. Somebody tell me how they did that. <laughs> You feel what I'm saying? Exactly. It was Thoth or one of the supreme grandmasters, the original supreme grandmasters or master scribes. And yes, occult does mean hidden. So when Jesus was doing miracles, explain how he did it. How did he turn water to wine? I asked your pastor to explain it and they'll only say what? That it was a work of God. Now, this is a fact because he was only replicating a work of God. And whoever that God was, was somebody who guided him, G-U-I-D-E, or guarded him, or oversaw him, G-U-A-R-D, God, 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 all right, to help him understand that science, to teach it however he taught it. You understand? There are a lot of sciences that are hidden in these books, and these sciences were what called the high priest. So my name means the highest priest. If you look at Omari, it means the highest priest. What do you think was going to happen? <laughs> And if I'm going to embody it and stay true to that name, not to say that I'm the only one named Omari, but to embody it and stay true to that name, I had to become a scientist. You know, and it, it, it didn't always feel good because, you know, you you grow up, everybody's having a good time. You know, for some reason, you feel like you have to focus. But you I, I would I don't frown upon people. I would have loved to just, you know, ran around chasing tail. You know, going to the club, party, and smoking drink. I would have loved to, you know, do whatever the people was doing that seemed like they was enjoying themselves. I would have loved to just be able to, but I couldn't do it because I always would feel like in any of those environments, I'm wasting time. So I dedicated the most of, not to say I never went out and did my thing, but I dedicated the most of my life to being able to understand these sciences. My bad, y'all. I, I see y'all trying to get the book. Let me put it for y'all. You got to send your donation and uh, your email to this cash app. Any donation, no matter, any, any amount. I have people send some of everything. All right. I'm going to pin it right here for you. My bad. I'll see y'all. So you actually learn what the order of the book is, why it came in such a way, and why the 10th one is called Rehab. There are other things that are being explained, which I broke down a long time ago. All right, I told people, well, that we're coming into the eight year, which means certain things have to be changed before we get there. Before you get to the eight year, something ha some things have to activate in your brain. So you're, some of y'all are on certain paths that other people may not be on, right? But you'll learn what that means. Okay, so the point of what I was explaining was, and I appreciate y'all for supporting the books. The point of what I was explaining is when we do this last dance, because you have to save the last dance, save the last dance, save. That's the last dance. Okay, when we do this last dance, there is a destruction that comes. Okay, and this was also referred to as <laughs> Shiva's dance. <coughs> Interestingly enough. All right. And the dance of Shiva explains that there becomes a destruction of your universe. This what you call your reality. This illusion, as I call it, will have to be shattered. There's an elephant that comes and stumps all over it. OK, and this elephant is not one being of light. Let me give you another science you've never heard. This being of light is 
God. Isha. Okay, Ghana. Isha. Well, if I say Ish or Isha, I'm saying the word fire or light. All right. If I say Ghana, I'm saying Ghana as in a group of beings. But you put that word together, you get Ghana Isha. So if I say Ghana Isha, what is that? The elephant. <laughs> in Hinduism, all right. Remember I told you we were going to be going through multiple schools. So a lot of times we talk about Christianity. Like sometimes we go into the car, Vedas, all of that. You have to know I'm versing that also. But this being, if you go look it up, is a being that is actually tied to the Om being. All right. Or resonance. And that being's whole purpose is to help aid Shiva. This is a hidden purpose, by the way, because it comes to trample the illusion. And you will find this breakdown in the symbol itself. OK, because that illusion or Maya, as you call it. All right. Becomes the separation of this crescent, this moon, where you go from that dark world into the light. All right. So imagine if I would just came on here and say, y'all, there's an elephant. It's a big ass elephant that's coming. It's going to be stumping all over the world. And niggas, it's going to be a dance that takes place. You wouldn't know what the fuck I'm saying. That's the point. So my point for you is to pay to your realm because this is how the elite are communicating with each other they say some shit like that <laughs> i'm giving you an analogy all oh, idea of war subliminals boom they already put you in the state then they got harriet there lead let mel this is supposed to be the moses let my people go leading my people home subliminals these are magicians that's why i put on the movie for you now you see me because if I leave a subliminal message right here, just, I'm just gonna put this right here. What you doing? Don't worry about that. Anyway, and you keep going on. Next thing you know, you go home, you draw this symbol. You don't know why you drew it. You give it to somebody, they draw it. Next thing you know, it becomes a trend. And everybody, all I did was I came and sat it there. Right? Somebody said in the comments, they said it was just a fight. 